Okay, so we're gonna talk about threaded fasteners today. The first distinction that I wanna make is the difference between a bolt and a screw. So we have two fasteners on the table here. One is a bolt and one is a screw. This one here is a bolt. This one here is a screw. Now they might look the same, but the difference is that the bolt has a nut in it. So a bolt would fasten a plate and a plate together with a through hole through both of them. So this bolt is gonna be threaded through and then you come in on the backside and you tighten a nut on, the, on it, that's gonna hold it, that's a bolt. A screw is different. A screw is going to have a, I drew that wrong, but it's gonna have a through hole. And on the second plate, you're gonna have threads. So a screw comes in and actually threads together and clamps it in place in that way. So that's a screw. And this one here is a bolt. So on our bolt here, we have, um, obviously you guys probably know this, but this is the nut. Okay, so the nut will screw off. These, this section and this portion here is the threads. And this section from the threads up to this shoulder here, this is called the shank. And then this part here in the, in the end here, this is called the head. Okay, so this is the head of the bolt. So the overall length of the fastener is indicated by the total length here from the head all the way to the end of the bolt. And the diameter, or the size of the bolt, is actually determined by the diameter here. So this diameter is the actual size that we will talk about. And we'll talk about size here in a second. So to recap, we have the head of the bolt. This one is a hex head. You can also have a socket head a pan head or a thumb screw. So there's different heads that on different bolts. This one here is a washer head. It's got a built-in washer on it. So those are all of the, um, the head. The length is from the head to the end of the bolt. And then in that, inside that length, you're gonna have a shank and you're gonna have threads. Now sometimes, like in this case, the threads take up the whole length of the bolt. So you don't always get a shank there, but you do need to have threads. Okay, so in the first video, we looked at machine bolts versus cap screws. Now machine bolts are slightly different in the sense that they are, um, they're rolled. So if you see where the shank and the threads develop when they make these bolts they mass produce them and they actually have a die that comes in and kind of stamps them so they're kind of made to a lower standard they're readily available they're anywhere from a quarter inch all the way up to an inch and a half sizes um, these are your kind of standard bolts that you're going to see the other type of fastener that we have we talked about screws and i said cap screw but uh, the types of screws are uh, this is an allen head cap screw this is a metric allen head cap screw uh, with a knurled end. So cap screws like this are made to a much higher tolerance. Um, these are uh, cut threads or ground threads, uh, machined, and these are designed to be flush with wherever they're being fastened into, whether if they're screwed in, um, these are actually gonna not stick up above the surface, whereas a machine bolt will. Let's look at some nuts. These are standard, kind of your standard run of the mill national course. This is actually a national fine nut. This one here is a national course nut. You can tell the difference between a fine thread and a coarse thread and more on that later. But um, those are your standard ones that you'll see. You can also get nuts that have this nylon liner on the inside. And the idea is that when you 
uh, tighten that on, the nylon gets displaced and creates an interference fit so that it won't vibrate loose. You can also have square nuts that can just are easier to spin on by hand and uh, and then this is what we call a wing nut. So a wing nut will is designed to just be cranked on by hand so you don't can't actually put a wrench on this you maybe put pliers or something on there if you need to but these are just designed for quick installation and removal um, without applying a whole lot of torque on there so the, the internal threads of these nuts will match the external threads of these fasteners it's the same thread form Okay, so I want to look at a couple of different designations or, or the ways in which we designate these fasteners. So um, what is the difference between a national course and a national fine or a metric or a standard bolt and how, and how do we write those out? So here we have two very similar looking bolts and without be looking at them and if you were to just grab them out of a bolt bin, uh, you can't really tell that just looking at it from this angle that one of them is metric and one of them is imperial or inch, an inch fastener. The first way that you can tell is by looking at the head of the bolts. So the one on the right here, you can see it has these dashes. That means that it's a unified national course. And this one over here with the 8.8 on it stamped on it those numbers that means that it's metric that's the that what that tells us is how strong the metal that these bolts are made of the tensile strength of these bolts so um, while you look at them like here they look very similar when you look at them this way that's the first way to tell that they're metric or standard so let's look at the national course fastener first so this is a grade five we'll talk about grades in a little bit but um, the main thing I want to talk about is the size. So when we're measuring out the size, there's two different um, there's two different sizes that we want to look at. One of them is the diameter. So if we look at the diameter of this bolt, and I grab my calipers, when I measure this, it is a half inch. So this is a one half inch national course. I can tell that it's national course because of the, uh, I can just tell by experience mainly, but when you put it next to a fine thread, you can really tell the difference between a coarse thread and a fine thread. The fine thread has many more threads per inch than the coarse one, okay? So this is a national course. So if we were to write this out, we're gonna write it out as one half inch And it is, uh, the next designation is the actual thread pitch. So the thread pitch is if we were to draw or take a, a ruler and we look at this and we say, okay, here is one inch. So I'll, I'll line up one inch or let's just do it to any kind of random spot here. And I look at this and I go, okay, over the course of an inch, I have one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen threads per inch. So I have a one half inch by thirteen threads per inch. And then the next designation that I'm going to put in here is the length. So the length that I want to use is not the length of the bolt threads or the screw threads. The length is from the shoulder of the head of the bolt to the end. So even though this this one looks a little shy of a two inches, they don't make them in one and seven eighths. So this is, they're usually by every quarter inch or half inch. So this is a one and, or sorry, this is a two inch bolt. So this is a half inch. So I'll rewrite this out. It's a one half inch national course by 13 threads per inch by two inches. And then if I want to add any kind of extra, I can say that this is a hex head bolt, right? It's not an Allen head, like if it was an Allen head cap screw or a socket head cap screw, I'd say that or if it had different things. So I could say that this is a hex, this is a hex head. 
and I can say that uh, this has a, um, a zinc coating on it. So you can actually add the, or zinc plated, so I can actually add that there is a um, zinc plated. So I can add that in. This would be what a standard, just regular raw steel bolt looks like. It's just got the black finish on it. It's been stamped out. Um, this one has uh, has been dipped in zinc to uh, stop it from corroding and protect it a little bit. So um, those are the designations for Imperial. So we have the um, diameter of the thread, the number of threads per inch, and then the length. Those are the main ones. Um, the other thing to think about too is that um, you can say that this is uh, an A or a B. So these can be A or B. A is internal, or sorry, A is external, and B is an internal. So A th class threads are bolts, B class threads would be designated as a nut or something with an internal thread in it, okay? So that's all the stuff that you need to know for the designations for Imperial. Um, also, commonly referred to as um, Unified National Course or Unified National Fine, right? So the Unified National is just the thread form of a 60 degree uh, thread. Let's talk about metric. Metric also has a 60 degree thread, but again, when we look at it, it tells us the um, by the numbers on it that this is a metric bolt. So. Metric um, has a very similar um, type, a type of designation where the first thing that we mark out is the size. So I can do a quick conversion here and I can measure this out and I can say that this is this is a also a half inch fastener well it's not a half inch fastener it's very much the same but this is a m12 okay so the m12 is saying that the diameter from one side to the other is 12 millimeters so this is the diameter the m12 now here's where it kind of changes up a little bit with um with a Imperial fastener, you count how many, you remember I went one, two, three, four, and I counted up 13 threads per inch. But with a metric thread, you actually end up counting the distance between one thread to the next. So in this case, the thread pitch on this one from one to the next is a 1.5 pitch. So in metric, it's a different designation. They measure the distance from one point to the adjacent corresponding point of the next uh, screw thread. Whereas with this one, it's how many per inch, threads per inch, okay? So that's a really important designation. And then the last part here is that they're uh, gonna tell you how many, or how, what the distance is in, in uh, millimeters. So for this one, it is in millimeters. This one is 50, 60. This one is 60. So that's the length. And it's the same thing for metric as imperial, where you measure the length as you actually go from the head of the bolt all the way out to the flank. So this is the thread. This is the shank. Okay, and then this is the head. Okay, so that was by 60. Um, yeah, so that's all the main parts of this, uh, of the metric designation. Uh, you can also get into it in both of these. Um, you, can, you can designate in here uh, what the grade is. So you can put that in anywhere you want. So you can go one half inch by 13 by two, um, and then you could write in there grade five. And then for this one metric eight, you can say that this one is grade 8.8 .8 or class 8.8. .8. And more on that a little bit.
we'll talk about that part a little bit more. Let's talk about the markings on the head of a bolt. So I don't have a ton of examples with me here, but um, I do, I can go back to these two original ones. So for a grade five bolt, what you actually are going to see if I can draw really quick is you're gonna see one, two, three. So for national course or national fine, um, basically, you take the number of dashes one and add two. So this one has three dashes. If we add two to that, um, that tells us that it's a grade five. So grade five is kind of like your standard um, grade. So a grade five bolt can withstand 120,000 pounds of force withstand it per uh, square inch and I'll discuss that a little bit more later. This is the metric equivalent, and this one is 8.8, um, .8, and this one will stand a little bit different number than the grade five, but it is very similar. Um, they actually measure it in megapascals, but the actual, um, so this one here, it has the 8.8, .8, so on the bolt head like that, there's always a eight, Point eight, or it could be a 9.8 or 10.9 or different standards. So that's the class or the grade of the bolt. So for an 8.8, .8, um, that has the same equivalent of 120,000 pounds per square inch, but in metric, they measure things in, in megapascals. So that would actually be um, 900 megapascals of force that it can withstand. So what that means um, is for... For this 120,000 pounds per square inch, if I take the, the diameter of this bolt and I cut it in half and I look at how much surface area that I have uh, on the minor diameter, not on the major diameter, like the smallest diameter, and then I, I take that and I divide that into how much force that if I try to pull this thing apart as hard as I can with a machine, how long before it actually will break. It can only take so much before it elongates and it snaps. So if we were to take um, a, a bolt and we looked at its cross section and that cross section worked out to be exactly um, one square inch. So this cross section right here, if that equaled one square inch, if it was a grade five bolt, that means that it would be able to withstand 120,000 uh, pounds per that amount of surface area. If we had, uh, if it, we did the same thing and we had a much larger uh, surface, and let's say that that one was two inches squared, that would be able to withstand 240,000 pounds. So the bigger the surface area, the more material, the more resistance. It's why you have big bolts and small bolts. So on the metric one, it's the exact same. The conversion factor is the same. It's the same greatest steel where it can withstand 120,000. Now there are, um, here's another grade five bolt with three dash lines on it. Um, so there's a lot of different um, grades and mark and uh, marks of bolts. The, the big one that I wanna talk about though is, uh, let's look at, Oh, here's one. Great. So this is a, and you can often tell high tensile bolts just by this gold uh, plating, especially ready rod too. You can tell the difference between um, ready, like just standard grade five and, and high tensile ready rod by this kind of goldish plating that they put on it. So you see this one has one, two, three, four, five, six markings on it. So if we go back to our original drawing here, if we have six, so one, two, three, four, five, six, we're gonna take six markings plus two. This is a grade eight bolt. And a grade eight bolt can withstand 150,000 pounds per square inch, okay? So this is a grade eight bolt. This is a jacking bolt or a set screw, whatever you want to call it. Um, it 
it's got the, the cupped end. This is also a grade eight. All bolts that have this square head and this cupped end on the end are all grade eight also. And all of these socket head cap screws or Allen head cap screws, they're all grade eight also. Um, so it's a good to have the differentiation because this is grade eight. These guys are all grade eight. Um, so it's good to understand that these are different strength because if you go to thread a grade eight bolt into a, uh, a weaker steel, uh, I would rather have the bolt be damaged, drill out and replace the bolt than to strip the threads on something that is softer and then have to go through the process of repairing the threads in the machine. Uh, bolt to replaceable machine threads are not. So those are the main threads, thread head bolt on the bolt designations. Machine screws are smaller screws. Uh, they usually are no larger than a quarter inch. Uh, sometimes you can find them up to three quarters of an inch. They're slightly different kind of thread, uh, the same thread shape, but you can get them in a different kind of variety of, of, um, of thread per inch for the diameter. So this one is a standard or slotted. It's just got that flat um, flathead screwdriver slot in it. You can also get them in Phillips, Robertson, Torx. Um, you can get them in Allen heads. Uh, you can get like different spanners for them. So there's a lot of different types of machine screw uh, driving recesses uh, available depending on what you're working on. They can also have a rounded head. They can have a flat head. They can be countersunk. They can have um, 12 points on it. There's a lot of different head types that you can get for it. So that's a designation. A designation for a machine screw would look something like this. It would look like maybe something like 10, 24, and then like one and one half, okay? So the 10 here is the diameter. The 24 is the number of threads per inch, and this would be the length. It's very much like the unified um, national course or unified that unified national fine threads that we have the diameter except for instead of actually having a measurement they give us this number so a number one is equal to 0 0.073 thou a number two is equivalent to 0 0.086 thou okay so the way that you calculate machine is you take the number so let's say it's uh, number 10. So we go with number 10, and then we times it by uh, 13 thou. Okay, and then we add that to uh, 60 thou. So 10 times this would be point, uh, one, three, zero, and then we add point zero six zero, and we get, um, 0 0.190 thou, thousandths of, of an inch for the diameter of a number 10. So that's, this is the, um, the formula is basically the number of the fastener times 0 0.013 thou, or 13 thou, sorry, and then add that to 60 thou. And that there is the formula for calculating the machine screws. Uh, good information to have. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, the same diameter for national course and national fine with the numbers, but um, you can have national fine and national course screw threads and so the thread spring. Sorry, the 10 would be 1024 for national course and then it would be a 1032 for a national fine. I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong numbers in my chart here. So those are machine screws. Okay, looking at set screws. Set screws are, again, the grade eight, they're a higher carbon content or higher strength bolt than, than your regular grade fives. Um, they're used to retain hubs or collars or gears anywhere where we have a part that's attached to another part and we want to just kind of sink it and lock it in position. Um, They come in, um, a lot of the set screws that you'll see that are recessed down the hole will have this um, Allen head socket or a, a hex socket shape inside the, the middle of it to set it. Most most couplings and things that you'll see 
Um, this is another type. This is called a square head or um, a grub screw that uh, can be used for anchoring things in place that maybe aren't rotating. Um, the extra mass can um, throw things out of balance. So usually when you have something that's rotating, you use these set screws that will sit flush so that it doesn't throw off the, the balance as much. It can be um, balanced a lot easier. The next part about these is between the grub screw and Allen set screws are um, the types of points. So you can see on this one, there is kind of a knurled, you see that kind of gnarly kind of edge on it. So that's a gnar knurled point on it. Whereas this one has a, uh, even though it's got kind of a dish in it, it's, um, this would be called a flat point. So that's gonna kind of bite in flat there on that part. Um, you can also get ones that have like kind of an oval bottom to it. You can get ones that are threaded and then have a cone. You can get one that's called a half dog where there's just kind of a small flat part on it. And then you can find ones that are called a full dog where there's kind of a larger point, flat point on it. So those are the different types of uh, points on set screws. So when you're applying and, and actually setting up a a, um, a set screw, oh, sorry, one more point on that. The half dog and the full dog, these ones here are usually designed that they're going against a flat or some kind of a surface. Same with the knurled one. They're up against some kind of surface, whereas the half dog and the full dog, usually they're being fit or located inside of a drilled hole or something to position them already. So that's why they have that machined recess. So there's something that's already there. So this shear is actually gonna be trans, the shear load is gonna be translated or transmitted through the point on the on those set screws. Um, Yeah, so when you're applying and torquing down these set screws, it's very common on a shaft, uh, if you have a hub, that you're gonna actually have two of these um, set screws. So if this is the hub, you're gonna have one here, and then you actually have a second one that's 90 degrees over on, in this direction as well. And uh, there's oftentimes uh, a key or a flat part there where you torque them down. A common method when you're setting a, a uh, a coupling like this is that you want to tighten the one above the keyway first that will sink and lock this whole fit and connection in and then the second one that you're going to do so this one would be the first one and then the second one that you're going to do over here is going to be the second uh, tightened set screw.